Uh, welcome everybody tonight that uh, talks about architecture. Uh, very excited uh, to have you. Uh, thank you all for being here, uh, despite the fact that it's uh, Black Friday. And uh, we have a World Cup uh, football, which both are important parts of uh, our everyday life, uh, shopping and, uh, and football. And uh, of course, we hope that uh, architecture, or we believe that architecture is also an important part of uh, our everyday life. So uh, thank you to, uh, to attend tonight. Uh, Garage, especially for the, relating to the World Cup uh, football, they made the, the stand in this way to uh, sort of feel like we're in a football stadium. Um, for the hooligans back there, this is not a table in between uh, the front rows and the back rows, it's, uh, it's a piece of art. So we have to be uh, quite careful not to put anything uh, on it. So um, last time we were here was uh, exactly, almost exactly three years ago, uh, 38th of November in 2019. Uh, Yves Moreau of uh, the Office Muoto uh, talked about his work and uh, it was a nice, nice night. And then uh, shortly after uh, COVID happened, and uh, we couldn't organize uh, live lectures uh, for a couple of years. Uh, what we did uh, together with AIR was uh, we, uh, we organized two lectures which we record through uh, Zoom. We had a lecture with Noro Rhodes from uh, Stockholm and uh, Hugh Strange from London. And for us it was an interesting thing to do because we have really, in the end, we have really nice edited uh, video lectures with sort of uh, the presentations, high res uh, in these videos. But at the same time, it was really difficult to organize like a, a video, a live video event around it. And it had a lot to do with the timing because uh, the summer of uh, last year, 2021, uh, the bars uh, and cafes were sort of reopened at the moment that we were sort of organizing this, uh, this video lecture. And of course, there wasn't any uh, audience uh, because everybody prefer to be on a, on, a, on a terrace drinking beer with their friends. Uh, very understandable. Everybody was fed up with uh, these, these video events. So uh, that was understandable, a bit disappointing uh, for us. But we also realized that uh, we made an important realization that life is always better. Uh, being in a real place like this with uh, real people talking and uh, meeting uh, whether it's, it, it is for having a beer or for uh, attending to an architecture lectures. So here we are tonight, uh, 2022, with a new uh, series. Uh, we have sort of a pressure cooker lecture series of two lectures, uh, two weeks uh, in a row, uh, which we are again very happy to be here at Garage Rotterdam and organize it together with uh, AIR. This week we have uh, Atelier uh, Abraha Acherman and, uh, from Zurich and next week we will have uh, Clancy Moore, architects from uh, Dublin. Uh, so at first welcome to Rotterdam, Daniel, Stefan, Daniel Abraha and Stefan Acherman. Uh, we're very happy to, uh, to have you. Uh, Daniel and Stefan, uh, they both studied at the ETH Zurich and they worked from some renowned offices in Switzerland and then founded their office in 2010. Uh, fun fact, you both have a connection with uh, the Netherlands because you studied at the TU Delft and worked uh, at the office of Bjarne Masterbroek in Amsterdam. So there is like a, a, a Dutch link. Uh, uh, and at that time, shortly after the, the, the millennium, uh, the Netherlands was really the, the place to be uh, uh, if you want to sort of practice uh, playful, uh, fun, uh, conceptual architecture. So um, you came here to sort of experience that and now we ask you back to, uh, uh, to talk about what you are working on in uh, Switzerland. Uh, so um, Sander and I, we, we, we invited you because we stumbled on your website uh, some time ago and we say it's a really fascinating place. Uh, it shows a lot of your work and it tells a lot of where you're coming, where you're coming from, uh, what, what drives you and it shows the focus on three fundamental uh, architecture media, the, the drawing, the model, and the, and the photo. And especially the drawings from uh, housing plans, they really uh, attracted our attention uh, because they are 
beautiful, and there, there, there are a lot. And um, what you really see there is sort of these solid, heavy structures, which are really graphically uh, yeah, interesting and, and clear uh, on the one hand. And on the second hand, they are <coughs> sort of filled in with all these lighter elements like flooring materials, people, stuff, furniture, plants, uh, etc. And um, uh, the interesting thing about it that is in uh, um, all these this sort of this relation between the solid structure and these lighter uh, elements um, really make these sort of two-dimensional plants come alive and show the life uh, within the buildings. So uh, the same can be said for your models and of course the photos of uh, construction sites which are the end result of uh, design uh, efforts and uh, yeah you, this, you see the same this um, uh, the solid structures which are filled in with uh, shutters, uh, sunscreens, balconies which are lighter and um, so in the end this symphony of solid, fluid, heavy and light, stable and flexible is uh, very interesting so, uh, when we spoke a couple of weeks ago through uh, Zoom, uh, after you accepted our invitation, um, you told us your main motivation of uh, working together and uh, the, the reason why you're making architecture. And it is about sort of stepping away from this typical notion of architecture in Switzerland, which is always like this sort of really well-designed, uh, boxy uh, building which is a little bit uh, expensive and um, you really sort of wanted to step away from this notion of architecture uh, uh, you really want to step away from this notion that uh, to make architecture that is really for uh, everyday life uh, an architecture which is about the dirty realism that's uh, inside uh, these houses inside schools, places of work, etc. So, uh, this, and the last uh, remark that you made, sorry, <laughs> I'm having trouble with my words, um, so I will, uh, I will end it. Um, uh, the condition in Swiss cities that you say is um, hardly urban, it's mostly suburban. And um, you want to contribute to making this, uh, the Swiss cities uh, more urban, I, th I think more dense, more complex, more affordable, uh, more inclusive in a way. And I think these are really yeah, relevant ambitions, uh, relevant in Switzerland, also relevant in the Netherlands. And um, we think that your, your work is very suitable to address these ambitions you mentioned. And uh, we are very curious to learn more, to learn all about it. So. Daniel, the floor is yours. Hello, everyone. Um, many thanks, Robert Jan, for this uh, uh, kind words and a good uh, um, introduction. And I hope uh, I can uh, <laughs> and, yeah, keep up to your words <laughs> or to what you mentioned about the office. Um, um, many thanks also for the invitation and that uh, we can be here. Um, it's a, a very nice and flattering uh, uh, thing. Um, I will start um, uh, with a few words to our, to our office, to our studio. Um, uh, Stefan and I um, started back in 2010 um, to make architecture together after we studied uh, together at ETH. In Zurich. Meanwhile, we are um, uh, uh, around 10 people, still a small office, small studio, and we are involved um, very much in every project. Um, we have not a hi hierarchy, we are uh, uh, trying to, to involve everyone and all the ideas. Um, we work a lot with models, um, maybe you have seen that on our website or so. Um, we, we try to discuss many things with our team and uh, um, and not uh, do uh, everything on our own. Um, yeah, it's always uh, kind of a hard task to 
present uh, um, uh, uh, like a position in this kind of lectures, um, like a, a priori uh, fixed position where we can uh, uh, say the office do, does that or um, uh, has this language or so. Um, in fact, we try rather to avoid uh, like a clear uh, language that is uh, visible in every project. Um, this slide shows um, <coughs> Um, a, a, a graphical board from Ernst Haeckel. Uh, it's a lithography from 1904. And what fascinates us here is this entity of, uh, of all these very different things. And then we think about how we can make uh, every project in a way that it can ha have his own position somehow uh, that is uh, really uh, strongly connected to the place and to the task and does not only um, yeah, um, shows a repetition of uh, a singular interest that we have as, a, as architects. Um, and another interesting um, uh, reference or uh, curiosity is this uh, uh, animalarium of Professor Revio. It is a miraculous almanac of the fauna um, uh, with nice illustrations um, uh, by Javier Saez Castan. Um, and um, uh, yeah, I, I uh, sometimes look at this. Uh, it's like a ring book, and you can uh, switch the sides. And um, I sometimes look this uh, with my uh, children. Um, and what is really interesting that these animals have uh, are adjusted in scale, so that they can somehow uh, always come together. And what we like about this, and what we uh, find fascinating about this, is this. Um, had this intention to somehow bring things together that don't or in the first sight uh, contradict each other or um, or uh, yeah uh, seem totally incompatible with each other and uh, yeah it's a bit uh, similar with architecture there is so many things there i mean there is so many things in the history there is so many things to see everything has been done um, already and it's always a question how uh, to put things uh, together uh, in a new way. Um, another um, yeah, that was maybe a bit like a, a conceptual part. And another <coughs> very important part for us is, um, um, is, 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 is uh, the everyday life, the, the architecture is uh, like a stage for life. Um, and uh, the, the center of every architecture is the human or uh, the people. This uh, image shows, uh, these two images show uh, situations in uh, our project in Basel, El Matost. I will uh, uh, speak about it later. And um, uh, what we like about this is that uh, this directness that we uh, design buildings for people that live there, they uh, have. Uh, 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 things there, experience love stories there, or tragedies, or whatever, but it's just there, and it's not uh, 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 this exclusive, uh, 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 this, this notion of architecture is something really exclusive, but something that is uh, there for, for the everyday life. Um, we have uh, prepared kind of two, or try to divide this lecture in, in two parts. There will be like a First, first part where we will um, focus only on housing. I mean, uh, um, that's that's the, like the, the program that uh, comes out of this uh, this image uh, or this slide that I uh, showed before. It's uh, this focus on on, on housing that uh, we grew into, um, and uh, it's yeah, it's a program that everyone knows that we know also the best. Um, I mean, everyone lives in a house. Um, every day or in an apartment and um, um, that's a kind of a program that uh, we see a lot of potential in um, in terms of architecture and, and space um, and what, what we find fascinating is um, that it's a kind of uh, I, will, I will show uh, examples it's a kind of I mean what is interesting the, the program is always the same uh, there is a, a series of small spaces like a bathroom a kitchen a living room a sleeping room and so on and uh, the program is basically always the same but depending on the place where it is 
um, uh, there is can take on different forms and different structures, and that's what we basically research about with this uh, housing projects, uh, with the idea in mind that yeah we can change the space or positively maybe uh, influence the the space that people inhabit. So in this first part, uh, I will show only housing projects, and I will I will not show them in in, in detail. I will just kind of try to give an insight in, 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 in some of the concepts. For instance, um, this competition um, where we uh, tried like a this chamber system um, uh, with, with walls. Uh, there was, was a very steep topography in this project where we tried to react with these uh, uh, walls that kind of um, uh, come together uh, with this topography. Um, or other uh, concepts uh, where we try with, to work with this chamber system, so with the standings, uh, standing chambers, with these lying chambers, um, or more irregular uh, chamber uh, compositions. Um, with chamber, I mean that every space has a clear, uh, clear border and is not very fluent, but is, uh, the whole plan consists of, of a many. Uh, always for, uh, for uh, edge spaces. Um, other uh, situations, uh, especially in the outskirts of Zurich, where many of these competitions um, are placed, um, uh, are quite suburban and, and uh, very heterogeneous uh, urban settlements. So this uh, allows us also uh, more free or more geometrical uh, positions. For instance, this uh, project is a housing project for a cooperative, like many others uh, that I'm showing in this row. And uh, the form and uh, this uh, spatial uh, configuration comes especially out of uh, placing the house between a very beautiful and large tree, uh, uh, tree pop or tree situation with the many uh, protected and, and big trees. So the house tries to, to uh, form itself between these trees. At the same time, there is always like a clear principle uh, of, of how to, to, to uh, uh, generate space and then does generate the typology. There is um, another example uh, that goes in the same direction. It's uh, our project in Keller, where we also um, have this uh, uh, tree park-like situation where we placed very uh, free uh, in a freely way and um, these buildings um, um, and uh, that consists of six very small apartments um, that uh, are configured in that way that we always generate um, uh, a large middle that can uh, be used as a as a neighborhood space as a space to meet uh, with large skylights Um, this project uh, was uh, social housing, subsidized social housing, so uh, the, the key issue was to deal with very, very uh, simple, cheap materials like linoleum and, and uh, throughout the whole mass. Um, uh, uh, with these four buildings, we, uh, we generated like a color concept that uh, varies uh, from house to house or other uh, spatial topological systems where we uh, work with this very, very rigid and uh, spatial space consisting uh, walls, also very deep walls uh, with outside enclosures or uh, access galleries, in this case here with this uh, kind of um, system where the kitchen is always uh, between the entrance uh, or the entrance is between the kitchen and the access gallery. and uh, uh, internal uh, duplex system and a bit similar like Alan Matost. Um, these spatial or these typological ideas, we, we, we try to uh, research them uh, a lot with models and we do that because we can uh, research the construction, the material, the, the light, the space, the windows, all these architectural elements um, in, a, in, a, in a quite detailed way but still in with a certain abstraction that uh, we would not have uh, with, with this uh, uh, realistic, uh, super realistic uh, renderings. 
although we do also um, uh, try things out with, with uh, 3D as well, or like here, for instance, uh, the scale of a, of, a, of a family, of a detached family house, actually our first uh, detached family house where we try to um, uh, work with uh, these concrete cores that are the static structure that have all the, the serving spaces like um, the kitchen, the heating and everything itself. And uh, in between um, there is the this, uh, sections of uh, wood, uh, also with the gabled roof. And uh, uh, yeah, and everything is in this cascade uh, stairs, this stair situation that is also within this uh, concrete course and structures the house like that. Or other projects like uh, our project for the Cooperative BGO, um, where we um, uh, try uh, uh, the typologies that work over, over a section or interdependent uh, floor plans uh, that are connected through the section. So, for instance, here with the split down, with the overheight uh, situation here, and with the overheight situation to the garden that makes these garden apartments and has here this uh, row of uh, uh, commercial spaces towards the street. This bay window uh, kitchen type that uh, uh, opens up uh, a view into the street. Uh, some uh, section models that we uh, try to examine this uh, typology. At section typology, or completely different uh, ideas where we try to occupy the whole plot, uh, but with a very flat structure and uh, uh, with courtyards, and thus create like outside uh, access uh, enclosure with outside uh, that come over the the, the veranda uh, and and. Uh, apartments are uh, connected like 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 over this uh, enclosure uh, galleries and situations with small courts and in between like row houses with other courts and uh, in that way create like a very very small scale uh, uh, neighborhood space or then again totally different situations where we try um, to to have a very dense uh, dense situation of houses. This is a competition that we could uh, win recently, we replace uh, um, uh, nine houses in a way that yeah, they can kind of oscillate between a large scale form, but then uh, also have the aspect of a quite moderate scale uh, urban villa. Um, but we put them very close together because we think uh, a good neighborhood is not about distance, but it's more about closeness. And uh, uh, in that sense, yeah, we think of Italy or uh, Bologna or uh, 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 Genoa, where, where you have really these uh, dense spaces and uh, uh, that, that somehow generate urban urbanity. And then in the reaction to this uh, urban typology, there is like duplex apartments on, on one side and uh, split rooms, um, uh, uh, split individual rooms. And then, uh, yeah, with this uh, typology, it always has the same simple course, um, but um, has uh, within that system different uh, housing types. For instance, this closed large kitchen uh, living or uh, a kitchen like an like a island to circulate around. This is well, the more organic uh, typologies that we tried. Um, also in, uh, in lot or other outskirts, uh, outskirts situations in the city where this, uh, where, where the plots allow this kind of development of a typology from inside out a little bit. And then the iterative kind of uh, comparison to the plot and, and to a way to put it in the plot. This typology is uh, 
like it has this compact uh, configuration of kitchen, bath, uh, some cupboards, and then the, the, the apartment is organized around it. And we put it in a way together that we can have this fluent outside spaces or here. Um, where the situation was very near from a forest and where we uh, kind of had the idea that this outside space is like a central space for the apartment. So like that, we tried to figure out how to put every space of the apartment to this outside space, which generates this uh, organic form. But it has a logic that's always something that is important to us. Um, so we don't go there and shape uh, like a balcony but uh, the shape is generated out of, yeah, out of this, uh, this condition that every space finds its way to, to, the, to the outside space. Um, this is a recent project uh, for a transformation from a dare care center. And uh, what was fascinating here, that was a quite ugly uh, building uh, from the 70s, but um, it was uh, very deep with this 16-meter uh, um, uh, deep plan and this uh, typology of this Rue Interieur um, uh, comes from this uh, daycare typology that has uh, had also this uh, a corridor in the middle and uh, rooms on both sides. And uh, the task to build here very small apartments we try to tackle and um, to have like uh, single uh, single floor apartments to the court side and to this urban side here, which you can see here in a bit on the image. We uh, try to generate out of this bay window, existing bay windows, which we uh, programmed with these kitchens. And then out of this uh, generated this uh, duplex type, which is very, very small. But um, to this uh, two story situation, and uh, the voids here uh, allows also light in this uh, 16 meters. This is just uh, a bit as an overview um, without going too much in detail to every project, but just um, yeah, what is fascinating is that it's always the same program, more or less. There is one and a half, two and a half, three and a half, four and a half uh, room apartments with small spaces in there and uh, yeah, that's what we are after kind of to, to show ways um, or, yeah, to show different ways how, uh, how you could put that or, or make a quality out of it that uh, is a bit more than the average mediocre housing uh, that we all know. Um, in the second part of the lecture um, I will uh, cl traditionally, classically show just three projects, um, not too many, otherwise you fall asleep too soon. <laughs> um, um, and I will start with our first uh, uh, competition win, our first elective competition uh, for a listed, um, uh, national listed uh, court building, which was a very lucky situation for us as young architects, 2011, one year after starting the office to win a competition, but then we won a competition to uh, re refurbish and extend this castle, <laughs> which was a very difficult uh, task. <clears throat> um, and probably still today would be, uh, yeah, it's uh, from 1906, it's a very, uh, there's this uh, trespassing windows. It's a historical style with a lot of mixtures from historical two-door style. And it was built already as a courthouse. Uh, in, uh, yeah, it's, it's a small place in Eastern Switzerland. It has this uh, ripped wall and uh, this, uh, this integrative uh, protect uh, elements, which is read here in this kind of traffic plan. Uh, traffic light plans. Um, green is kind of uh, worthless and uh, uh, things that come from 1980 or so and uh, the red is uh, original things that were really um, uh, uh, um, uh, important and to integrate and, and uh, yellow is kind of things that are unclear uh, what to do depending on the intention. And then um, we had 
the, the extension, uh, the, the main uh, idea of this uh, heritage protection municipality was to uh, make sure that the main building is not being uh, kind of in a concurrence with this uh, extension. So they suggested one should build it on the side and connect it. And then we just uh, proposed where these yellow areas are to just continue and build directly on the existing house. And this was a funny uh, vernacular uh, reference from a uh, Queen's mine. <laughs> but we, we kind of uh, yeah, liked this a bit absurd, curious uh, kind of roof uh, uh, connection. Um, and so, so we decided to build directly on the on the uh, on, on on this existing building and to connect these houses together. This is the interventions that we made in the existing building. We made just a new elevator and a completely new foundation um, with integrated technical things, uh, which was all not so easy to do for a not very experienced uh, <laughs> uh, a starter, a start of a start, but it was very interesting to learn. Um, this is work with the restoration to figure out um, uh, the original colors and things like that. And the static structure of the extension that consists only of these sla three slabs um, in the end, it was four slabs. This is catches to it, and uh, there is this uh, core and uh, the the side slabs that are the statics. And this space of interconnection here, with some smaller voids, you can see here. The rest is a, a wood construction. So this is only these four uh, slabs that um, form this extension. And um, in terms of construction, we analyzed this uh, existing house and um, discussed how we can interpret this, uh, this so-called Hurdis ceilings that were very uh, typical for this time with steel and uh, clay plates. And we transform, try to transform this with wood and concrete um, uh, in, a, in a kind of wood and concrete um, uh, combination ceiling which would reference this, uh, this uh, uh, existing house. Building site, picture, and then you see here this construction. construction. So we try to experiment a little bit with this uh, construction uh, uh, methods. And then the facade that kind of uh, um, also references this. Uh, you know, tries to uh, tries a way to to find a way to to to, uh, to match with this existing uh, coastal expression. And uh, one of the issues with this uh, uh, this um, Vorhang fenster, this uh, curtain windows, um, was to to uh, understand the whole facade uh, a little bit like a curtain that is uh, being. Uh, bordered here like uh, in a textile, uh, like a hem. It's these clay elements that are, uh, uh, that came to use. So you see that here with this uh, concrete hem that kind of uh, makes the closure, the border to the soil between these uh, clay elements. Sundial, which is a very typical element in this countryside uh, places. So yeah, we like that somehow a bit fearless to take something that is there and then try something out with it. With the colors that are from the original uh, time, construction time, 1906. In between this new stair with this, uh, you can see this intersection between the roof and uh, these two slabs. And uh, the concrete uh, slab with these wooden beams. 
So the concrete is only a 14 centimeter, which is what you need for a, a noise protection between these office uh, office spaces. On details. Yeah, the next house I will show is a, a very small project uh, in Sri Lanka. Totally different uh, <laughs> uh, situation, and uh, it's here, uh, very much in the south, uh, in a small bay. This uh, Hirikatia Bay, and uh, uh, that was uh, a fun uh, project. We were approached uh, by a young couple to that. Uh, could buy some land here and uh, wanted to make a, a small guest house in this village that is really, a, yeah, at least back then was really a, a part of the jungle somehow. And there is this uh, street that ends here, uh, kind of in this uh, sort of dead end, uh, with with a really wonderful view uh, over the over the ocean and to the south. And then we got this. Um, the guidelines for housing development in coastal Sri Lanka. That reg I mean, I think this document was uh, created after the tsunami uh, 2007, where they really uh, realized that they have to regulate the uh, building uh, along the sea. And this is the plan from the uh, village engineer. And um, uh, yeah, they explained us. There is a distance uh, uh, rules, like in Europe, <laughs> and uh, and uh, you can only build here. Um, uh, and, and, and then we asked, yeah, what what can we do here? I mean, uh, do we make a garden or? And then we figured out that we can actually build a wall all around the perimeter. This is allowed, but um, uh, we can only make like a house with windows and so on here in this red area. And then um, yeah, we studied a little bit. Uh, this is some vernacular um, uh, architecture from uh, Sri Lanka, uh, from from the 19th century. And uh, yeah, this fascination is clear. I mean, it's uh, like the Urhütte from from Godfrey Semper, with, uh, with with this very very basic uh, kind of uh, archetypes of, of uh, vernacular houses uh, in wood. And that was like a first idea to work with wood, but then we found out that this wood there is imported from Indonesia mostly and uh, yeah, it is not to be associated what we uh, think uh, wood is in terms of sufficiency and uh, and, and uh, ecology because uh, yeah, it's uh, usually it's a uh, jungle wood that they uh, tear down, it's teak, it's uh, so we got uh, quite skeptical about um, uh, this importing wood from another uh, country uh, under very unclear circumstances just to build in wood. Um, another very important uh, thing to study in Sri Lanka uh, were the houses from Jeffrey Bava. Um, uh, it's a master architect, uh, I would say, and uh, what one can learn from him, uh, especially on, on the house number 11 in Colombo, is um, how he treats uh, the outside and the inside spaces uh, due to the climate uh, situation in Sri Lanka um, uh, in a totally same way. Um, there is actually not a difference between inside and outside. And this is also what you uh, can experience in terms of climate um, uh, when you are there. So for us, it was clear that we, uh, I mean, we will never be able to uh, copy uh, this. Uh, and at the same time, uh, yeah, we were uh, looking for uh, yeah, uh, possibilities to somehow uh, uh, bring our own uh, uh, ideas into, into this. And uh, so we decided to make a really, uh, yeah, a free house, a very sculptural house that we can um, uh, just the uh, shape out of this perimeter and uh, we would occupy this situation uh, with courtyards because this was allowed, it's uh, not a house. <laughs> and uh, in that way we, we just uh, studied uh, uh, 
uh, on, on this culture, uh, how, to, how to articulate somehow this, uh, this uh, situation uh, as a sculpture. The scheme is really simple. There is uh, four guest rooms and they are all uh, uh, very, very uh, easily organized. They have a, a small split here with the outside showers. So that was uh, is maybe the, the only difference to a normal hotel uh, room is that this, the, you can open up here and uh, shower naked uh, uh, for yourself with the view uh, on the jungle. And here is a courtyard and uh, there is also a small courtyard here and there is these walls that have space. Um, and this is like a public uh, stair that uh, comes to, to the rooftop, which is here. And there is like an internal stair uh, with, the, uh, with the connection to the courtyard um, that is here. And there is a kitchen here. So it's a very, uh, very little house. Um, but the section, um, in the section, the, the spaces are always a bit different. And that has to do something with the rain that is there uh, in the rain time. And that is quite interesting. So we kind of allowed the rain to come to the house. We don't have a huge roof, but we make sure uh, how the rain goes away. Um, um, some section situations. And then we tested that and, uh, in 3D uh, uh, models. And in the end, and that was so fascinating for us. Um, when you uh, work as an architect in Switzerland, you uh, deal with a lot of regulations. And here we could just draw a plan and send it there and it would be laminated because it's uh, so humid in the air. And uh, they would they build the house with this plan. <coughs> so uh, the house is really built uh, like a model a little bit. Um, uh, and that, that was really fascinating, um, some of the details. Um, maybe to the plans, uh, yeah, we decided that we build it in concrete because we saw this material um, there, but they use it just like also in Africa, they use it for these uh, columns and beams and these structures, but they don't pour it uh, as a finalized form. And also that um, is something we know in Switzerland is so perfect, these concrete surfaces. And uh, here it was clear that it would be never that perfect, but um, that's where the concrete starts to get alive, you know? Um, when, when these surfaces yeah, start to be a bit dirty and rough and you can really see how the work has been done. And uh, so we decided uh, to, to build it in concrete and also the discussion took place whether um, a kind of a small contractor should do this or the, the, the village uh, engineer. And uh, we decided, for, of course, for the village engineer, because first of all, he was a, a really good guy that was interested to do this and acceptance uh, also in the village would be um, better. And uh, it just took very long, but, um, but uh, they, they, they made it and uh, yeah, um, uh, 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 we could we could realize it like that. This is uh, the concrete uh, mixer they worked with um, step by step. I mean, what is really interesting, you can build this house like a one to one model in this climate. It's uh, so uh, direct and rudimentary somehow and uh, yeah, we, we really like that also with these surfaces it's uh, so uh, easy this is the form work for one of the courtyards which uh, he made by steel uh, obviously something unpayable uh, in the, for Swiss relations I would say this is the builders um, and this is like the traditional stone uh, floor in the courtyards that we could do. And then this is, is uh, the, the surfaces of the concrete. We were we really liked it. 
but it was uh, yeah you could see the mistakes you could see the whole process of the house uh, how it was poured in these small steps yeah and uh, this idea of this culture or of this uh, yeah, of, of, of this diffusion between outside and inside, but also, yeah, when does a space start to get kind of enclosed, when it's still open, and how the plants uh, come through, through this, uh, yeah, that, that was this kind of ideas, or uh, that was the things we were uh, thinking about it uh, in relation to this uh, sculpture. There is like a small situation, step situation on the rooftop with a very nice over <coughs> corner view. And also here the rain collecting. And then, yeah, the idea that uh, there is no windows in the house. I mean, this is also a necessity because of the concrete and because of, uh, yeah, of the humidity that uh, there is air everywhere. And, uh, but what is particularly interesting is um, when you are here, you can kind of close off yourself, but still you hear everything that is outside. So you get really exposed uh, to this, uh, yeah, this tropical uh, situation that is outside and it's not just to enjoy it a little bit or sometimes it's also very loud um, when you sleep here. And uh, obviously some people find it too loud for their... Uh, taste but uh, yeah, we found it somehow interesting to to really make it experienceable um, when you're here because it's a special place the shower situation yeah and I'm coming already to the last um, project um, I hope I'm still in time, halfway. And uh, this is in Basel, um, it's El Motost. It's a housing project, housing and uh, social housing and uh, the cafe and uh, ateliers. And the site is on a, on a former industrial site of the German railway company. And uh, this is kind of a uh, a master plan that has been created here. It has like two sites, Elmont West and Elmont Ost. And there is like a very large and uh, quite nice park uh, that is in the middle. And Elmont West was uh, yeah, put up very fast and uh, it's a very commercial driven uh, project with very uh, uh, simple uh, apartments and uh, got also criticized a lot. And then this uh, Stiftung Habitat, this foundation, made this master plan here that uh, had, uh, had the idea of this small court, uh, courtyards that are uh, interconnected with, small, in, with each other, but also uh, with a closed uh, wall-like uh, uh, building type here and that closes off the courtyards from the, from the noise. This is like a highway uh, connection to, uh, to, to France and Germany. And then here it is uh, rather open or, yeah, to this uh, cutouts, uh, this open uh, situation to the park that has these uh, uh, small, small scale buildings. And uh, they made for each of the buildings, in our case for the two of, the, of those buildings here, uh, they made like a small competition, so it should be another architect, another client, small cooperatives, uh, and, uh, and that with, with, with a lot of ideas to sustainability and uh, with the vision of, of, of a kind of a neighborhood, uh, social uh, kind of uh, housing, um, uh, which would be more about sharing, about uh, you know, testing typologies, not so much like this uh, very rigid, uh, uh, simple situation uh, or housing typology on the Elmont West side. The two houses are opposite of this existing uh, grain silo, which was uh, remodeled also recently by uh, Harry Gucker. 
And this is a picture that Stefan uh, took in India, um, in Jaipur in 2014. And what we uh, found here very fascinating is this, uh, this very small spaces, um, uh, which are spared by these walls. And, and in each space is like a totally different uh, universe somehow. Um, uh, on, on such a small, small condel, yeah, com, 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 um, compromised uh, uh, space. Uh, this we found a very, very uh, inspiring picture. So here you can see you know, once again this situation with these uh, individual houses um, that are on the park. And this is the site of our two houses, with uh, two houses. And um, one must maybe say um, uh, the task was from Stiftung Abendroh to generate as much uh, 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 apartment units as possible. They should be as small as possible. Um, uh, so yeah, this was this idea of sufficiency that uh, the, every single apartment would have uh, just a little space and there would be spaces to share. And uh, one should really uh, think about conventions and uh, that was one of the tasks. So think about does every apartment need really a, the, the room uh, system of the closed room or is there more open? Uh, the, yeah, can one think about more open typologies um, and so on? So very, very interesting uh, and uh, unconventional task. Um, uh, at the same time, uh, they have um, uh, made this uh, quite large criteria catalog about uh, sustainability issues. Um, one must maybe say this was the competition was 2015, so we are still a bit, uh, it was not like today where everyone is talking about reuse and uh, sufficiency. And uh, so in that sense, this, uh, uh, this foundation Stiftung Hauptstadt had quite a, a strong idea already uh, about uh, thinking about sustainability with this uh, project, with this uh, criteria. And in this criteria, there would be a lot of points. There would be minimum points and, and uh, one could have also joker points with good ideas and so on. Also quite elaborated thing. So um, what we tried, uh, yeah, this, uh, this wall, this very rigid wall system, and uh, a typology that works with these outside um, access galleries. And this typology is also um, kind of uh, back on track again, or you can see a lot of, at least in Switzerland, we, we observe a lot of uh, competition entrances with the work with these uh, access galleries. And this is interesting, but this uh, typology has a certain, um, yeah, has certain, um, things to it. One is the privacy, so you walk past uh, an apartment. Um, one, another is the light, and then we try to, to connect those things by saying um, the apartments are not conventionally spanning two or so uh, axes, but only one. And uh, within each ax, uh, the apartment is organized vertically, so you can uh, connect this, this uh, axis vertically. Um, here is uh, the, the, like the ground type is two uh, stories, but there is types that connect to the ground floor to an atelier, which was also an idea um, to make that a typology that we're working and living is kind of, uh, yeah, can kind of mix up a bit more. And, uh, and then the more, most extreme case we have here where we connect all the floors within one um, uh, 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 axis. And interesting on that as well is, uh, this is the section um, to it. So um, the, the access gallery is always on, uh, on every second floor. And um, uh, interesting on that is uh, that you uh, um, have uh, uh, here um, uh, one staircase per house, which is quite efficient. And, uh, you have uh, uh, this, uh, this uh, infrastructural kind of uh, groups of stair, kitchen and bars that uh, structure the, the whole space. This is the ground floor with some of the ateliers 
that the Great Street, there was a, like a cafe, there was a small uh, social center, there is a bike shop here, a bicycle shop here, and some ateliers uh, here. And then this is the third and the fourth floor. So you can see here one floor with the access gallery. Um, and then on the, on, on the upper floor, there is uh, 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 one floor apartments, yeah, always on the side of, of the main staircase, and uh, which is kind of uh, working nicely because you don't have to pass it. So you go over your outside space to your apartment. And in between, this was like a building rule uh, from the law that we can only make uh, uh, this length of balconies towards the park. So the other apartments in between get their balcony here on the top floor. Uh, and this again allows to kind of um, uh, bring together these access galleries and the private outside spaces. So uh, yeah, you can, you can see there's uh, views uh, from the gallery to the, to the balcony, etc. Um, you can see here uh, a space to share with a large kitchen and the fireplace. So the apartments are quite small, and um, uh, but then you have here a small, we say, we, we named this uh, summer, um, summer room. Uh, it's towards the east and is nicely in the shadow. And we named this winter room because it's towards the west and has high windows. So it has uh, uh, for a long time sun uh, also in the winter. And then uh, constructively, we very much in the beginning already in the competition, there was this idea to, um, uh, to use the material uh, concrete um, as thin as possible and as reduced as possible. Um, uh, and this we could reach by um, not having any installations in it. So out of this, the idea was born to kind of unbundle as much elements of the house as possible and as consequently as possible. So to have a facade that has nothing to do with the structure, uh, with the ceilings, but also not with these access galleries. And then in here we have uh, this uh, prefabricated bathroom uh, unities that will be also uh, assembled on site and we have these staircases. And yeah, this, this we always like, things like that. I mean, when you, uh, then this idea with this prefabricated bath, um, you would find out very quickly that it's impossible to put those bars be uh, behind each other because you have to access from the local building site to these uh, installations here that come kind of completed on the site. So this makes it really necessary to put those things uh, on the side. And this leads that you have here a kitchen like this and the kitchen like this. So suddenly within this simple system, uh, you create these uh, differences. You have a stair here towards the, the housing, uh, the, the, the living niche to the park. And you have here a, a stair uh, case situation towards uh, the, the court. And then uh, you can see that not so good on this slide, but there's like concrete um, uh, stone Concrete, it's always alternating um, uh, between these niches and everywhere where this uh, installation, uh, these infrastructural elements are, there is this uh, uh, classic stone, uh, uh, calc stone uh, uh, walls. This is the detail section, so we have this uh, wooden facade that we tried to uh, articulate with these niches. Um, to, to generate a bit more space towards the inside, but also towards the outside for the plants or to sit down on this. Then you have these uh, detached uh, access galleries that are supporting only themselves. And they are connected just laterally. We have a wooden facade without the sunscreen in it, but outside of it. And um, uh, so that every part is kind of accessible for itself, even the heating, and uh, also the electrical uh, uh, 
uh, installations are also applied visibly on the walls. Yeah, and when you design this, then it's a nice idea. And then when the pro project progresses, then you realize that it's uh, very complicated and uh, no one actually knows how to build them. And then you have to study how it has to look like because it's like an image, uh, cannot be uh, just randomly done. And that's the annoying and the interesting thing. <laughs> that you have to uh, figure out how to, to do it. I mean, what is really nice now on the house is that you can really access these things. And we are, uh, yeah, now everyone is talking about this reuse and uh, yeah, this uh, capability of the house to be uh, put down in different parts. And um, this is really something uh, that is that is interesting and has a potential, but not only because of the ecology, also because of the expression, because you can give something to the apartment. You can avoid the typical, everything is white and has a wood floor uh, situation that has been done, done thousands and thousands of times uh, from, from every uh, investor or, or whatever. Um, so the chances for the architecture is uh, the interesting thing that we uh, try to to figure out or to find. This is some model tests with this in-between space with this uh, two-story access galleries and uh, this veranda in between. But this was a building rule um, that uh, these lines were defined and these cantilevering balconies um, could not be supported on the floor. So we um, um, find, uh, found uh, the way to hang them on these uh, beams. This is the construction site that was really easy. 18 centi I mean, <laughs> easy. 18 centimeter slabs, which is the thinnest possible, um, uh, and that you can do with still the acoustic uh, regulation to maintain the acoustic regulations uh, in Switzerland. And it only goes if you have no uh, in inlays in this whatsoever. This is for the stairs. Then this is the prefabrication of these uh, access galleries come to site, the bathroom that comes to site and when they come there and um, they remain closed because of the guarantee because if they get opened the the constructor is not taking any guarantee so one um, there is like nine different types and they you deliver them during the building site with each floor you have to pu uh, put them in and uh, because you cannot do it afterwards, but unfortunately you cannot check if it's the correct one um, because you cannot open them. Um, so this was kind of, uh, uh, yeah, all these kind of challenges that came with the building, which are of course very interesting, but also uh, a bit uh, makes one nervous. And um, yeah, because all these things were only, um, you could only put it um, floor by floor, also the stairs, so you, you have to protect the stairs, you see here, the protection of the stairs, because they were in uh, steel. And uh, then the, all the builders, they go only through these access galleries, so it's also something that we have underestimated, they're much slower when they move only on the side, and you cannot, uh, yeah, uh, scatter them out of the center <laughs> somehow from a, from a house. But then the Baumeister builds the fireplace, it's always nice. The precision. And then this is the, uh, after the first people have moved in. Yeah, outside we have this uh, ondulating uh, uh, well, it's this uh, ondulating 
a cement product to uh, clad the wooden facade. It's very robust and it somehow fit, fits to this uh, former industrial uh, area. And the beams with the steel cables for the balconies. And then the structure gets filled with plants and bikes and life. Uh, we like that. And these models with uh, the electrical box, is it here, is it a bit up, is it f so uh, you yeah, know, some questions you <laughs> have to answer um, when uh, yeah, everything is visible. But what is really nice is that the people really also change it now, or uh, in the atelier they put it somewhere else, or it's so easy to, to change things now on the house. And then this uh, upper zone, um, so it's kind of a three-room apartment with this uh, down zone and the upper zone. And there is always like a smaller space here and a smaller space here. And because it's open, we were not obliged to make this. I mean, there is like a rule in Switzerland. They say that the room is 12 square meter and for the um, uh, 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 inclusion of... Uh, uh, um, um, wheelchair people and um, one room has to be 14 square meter this is nice but it's always this yeah something in between and here we have sometimes nine square meter but then here we have 18 or 20 so we like that when it's a bit more yeah some a niche but then the, the other side is really big not uh, not everything is the same all the time and it was possible because it was op an open space The wooden facade inside. This is like an atelier situation. So we have to adjust the stair that you can circulate around it. And the upper place. And what is nice is that we try with the stair, we, we try to make it um, as thin, somehow constructed as possible, so that you still can see uh, through. Uh, the stair and somehow have a bit of feeling for this uh, uh, duplex situation, for this two-story situation. And then how people live in it. That was the best when we really uh, saw they start to put things here and use this and uh, all these uh, technical elements that uh, uh, usually everyone tries to hide that we yeah, can work with it and then people can use it and it's much more um, yeah small this small smaller micro micro scale in the apartment itself and also the flexibility so some of them had uh, here, like the private uh, working situation, but then again, it's a she for instance had on the upper, upper floor uh, her living room. So also to find out that people really differently furnish uh, furnish uh, the spaces, that was quite nice. To use the, uh, yeah, to bring some life in there, and everything else is just simple on Un unhydrated uh, floor. Uh, concrete visible this uh, masonry uh, walls we we uh, had to put plaster on them because of the acoustics this is the corner situation for um it's a fun small uh, foundation that works with uh, um uh, young people and teenagers that have a difficult uh, life situation so they have like a, a seven room uh, apartments where they uh, can uh, kind of um, um, monitor them a bit uh, informally and uh, this is like the base where they uh, they have a large, ki a large kitchen together this is the um, summer room with the fireplace
roof terrace on the on the cornered house that is open to everyone. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you very much to, uh, for showing us a very interesting uh, journey, I think, especially in the end. You show us, maybe on purpose, but it's like a journey coming from the Swiss castle to the, the tropics of uh, Sri Lanka and then ending up in a sort of railway urban situation uh, realizing this uh, incredible housing uh, scheme um, maybe um, start off with uh, one question and that is um, is there a how f it, it, it really looks a little bit uh, like the, 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 the experience in Sri Lanka was formative for uh, for you in some way because there is some I see a relation between this house in the tropics and this uh, this housing project is this uh, was this actually a formative project for your for your office and the way you work uh, at the, at this moment yeah no I I mean in the case of Sri Lanka um, finally one must say Ermont and Sri Lanka are almost in, done in the same same time. We started here with the planning 2000, end of 2015 and we started Sri Lanka 2016 and Sri Lanka was finalized end of 2019 and this was finalized in March 2019, <laughs> even before Sri Lanka. So in a way so a both projects parallel. were quite parallel and um, yeah, but uh, yeah, so in that sense it's not like one influenced the other. But what maybe is interesting that yeah, we just always had this yeah with Sri Lanka it's uh, so easy and it's like a model and uh, yeah you try to kind of in the Swiss realm you also think about a bit uh, to to do things so direct and then suddenly it's not so easy. Maybe in that sense that we uh, rather uh, yeah. Uh, happen to realize uh, from time to time how complicated the uh, building in Switzerland sometimes can be. And um, the second question uh, that I have is that in the f first part of your presentation you showed there's a lot of housing schemes and they're all, uh, they start a little bit from uh, sort of laying out this uh, a structure. And uh, so I was wondering um, and sometimes it's like it's really narrow, sometimes it's like a configuration of a lot of rooms. Uh, uh, it seems that you're really able to be sort of in control of laying this, this structure. Can you uh, tell something about how this works, for example, in this scheme where the, let's say the structure is very narrow? Uh, mm. Is it something for you to, to decide? To, uh, because as you say, the, the program is always a bit of the same for uh, for dwelling mm -hmm. so then it's really dependent on the the structure that you lay what's what kind of uh, yeah housing scheme you get and it seems um, you that you're able to to find a lot of freedom in uh, defining this structure um yeah i mean this is for sure a, a key issue no i mean with housing um yeah, as you said, or as I mentioned, um, there is always the same kind of program. So it's these rooms and the way how you um, bring them together. And there is also, in I don't know how it is here, but in Switzerland we have also a lot of rules to this. <laughs> like we have, uh, so there is also rules how wide this minimum has to be or how wide this minimum has to be and so on. So. Um, in a way, it's like a corset, you know, it's like a very, very narrow, um, yeah, always a very narrow starting point. And then out of the context, we usually try to, to find a system, a spatial system. I think that's what you probably mean with structure. Um, 
kind of a spatial typological system to arrange these spaces in a way that it's clearly readable somehow for us. I mean, um, when we decide we work with a chamber um, system, this means that you can have uh, uh, the living and the, the kitchen situation separated or so, or you can decide to have the living room also as a, be a bedroom. I mean, it's something we know from old uh, 18th, 19th century houses. Um, this chamber system, and then this is, but then the rule is given. The rule is every space has just four edges, <laughs> and then out of this, uh, yeah, maybe, uh, yeah, we we try kind of to find a spatial system that could have something to do with the task and the place, um, uh, and and out of this we develop, uh, try to develop it. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know if I could answer. Yeah, question. yeah, but I, I was in the end. It's also about uh, about building it and sort of sort of uh, uh, making it suitable to be uh, to be built to be a structure. In the end, mm. uh, in this case, it's, it's it's concrete or it's wood or it's uh, so uh, uh, often the, the the structure is sort of dominated by this uh, by the way that 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 it is built. So yeah. Uh, but especially when you uh, um, try to establish a logic of how you uh, build the spaces, it kind of goes hand in hand that the structure, the, if it's concrete or what, whatsoever, it, usually this question gets also answered through this. I mean, here with this idea of these walls um, that had to do something with the topography of the, of the site, so it's clear that they would be always in concrete or every second would be in concrete according to the spam and then some of them would be in concrete in this direction because you need uh, also the other direction and obviously we would do those that uh, would be with the, with the bathrooms or so because this is something you don't move so fast. It's, yeah, one logic leads kind of, or yeah, we always try to do something in the same logic. Yeah. Well, I think I think it's very impressive. So, um, are there any more questions from the audience? Uh, thank you, first of all, for the inspiring lecture. Um, I have a question about the first part of the presentation. Uh, you showed some uh, rather complex floor plans, and then uh, you showed an image of the project, and you said. Uh, Ah, uh, yeah, it's relatively um, cheap uh, materials and finishes, such as the PVC flooring. And then uh, I wonder, because for me, it's sort of a contradiction to make like a very uh, complicated plan that, of course, creates a lot of uh, uh, facade surface. If that's a conscious uh, choice early on your uh, process to make um, like the spatial experience and the the plan more important than uh, the materials you use in the project? Yeah, that's a good, uh, interesting question. I can uh, say something to that. Um, I mean, here, um, this site was, uh, in the best case, you can read a park in it, um, but it's the outskirts of Zurich. It's, a, one must say, it's a, this uh, so-called Gartenstadt. It's a, called kind of a, a post-war uh, urban, urban type of um, master plan kind of from a former uh, city building uh, uh, chief uh, Steiner. Um, so um, and it uh, has consisted of this kind of very simple uh, uh, row, row houses uh, with only two floors and very close to the earth. And now all, this whole area is being densified because there is a lot of reserves um, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the ground to, to use. And also here, these um, uh, apartments for elderly um, uh, were about to densify. And this type that uh, is not, uh, you cannot just make it seven floors or so. And then we searched for a building typology that would kind of uh, allow this garden and then um, uh, be here and then what we developed is um, um, uh, 
out of the idea of these small apartments. It's a, a, like social subsidized housing for elderly people from the city of Zurich. And uh, so out of this, the, the idea uh, was there to generate as much sides and windows to every small apartment as possible, since the elderly people are really bound to their four walls. So we tried to have uh, yeah, as much access to the outside space. And at the same time, um, um, it was about finding a way to put together um, six apartments in one floor, which is quite a lot. So it's not so easy to uh, arrange this. And what is nice about it that you get this middle, which is too big, and then you can cut uh, some space in there. And um, yeah, this was kind of the the capital of the project, the whole substance of the project. And for us, that's, uh, that's why I actually like your question, for, uh, or I think it's very important, I probably didn't uh, say anything or not enough to it. For us, um, this is kind of crucial to solve or have the largest substance of the project in the space, in the typology, in the spatial quality, and uh, not in, uh, yeah, or we, we don't want to rely on the fact that the client is going to build this very beautiful stone with us. And if that's not the case, the project collapses or these details have to be done. And if they don't work out that way, the project is nothing worth anymore. And that's like the biggest weapon of the architecture for me. It's the space, the typology. This you cannot save on the project away because then you lose everything. And um, so the more explicit the spatial, the typological scheme is, the more clear the qualities are, the more this is like what is being kept until the, the very end. This is what stays. And then everything else, yeah, you know, we, we, are, we don't go there and search the nice stone there. And not so, we try to develop it out of the logic but we are also totally happy to work with very easy, direct materials, because if the space can do something and has a strength, then you don't need expensive materials and uh, to value, make some value out of it, you know? And then, yeah, that was so easy, you know? The, then we could do something with colors, have this series, and still you can, uh, this is cheap materials, but you can combine them in a way uh, that, that uh, yeah, there is a value to it. But the most interesting thing is that these figures are always different. And there is many of them. And in the series, yeah, every apartment uh, is totally unique in the floor plan, not in the section, but in the floor plan. And this is like a quality and then yeah, it, in 20 years you can put here a, a wooden floor or whatever, also nice. Thank you. Uh, any more questions? Yeah. Thank you. Um, Thank you, very fascinating lecture. I think I've never seen so many floor plans in one lecture and such a fascination with the, with the floor plan. And um, I, I really, it took me a while to realize that actually I visited the Erlenmaat place this summer and um, I was going for the Hari Guger uh, silo building next oh. to it. So later I realized I've been there and I was really impressed by the, the way the the um, at least on the ground floor, by the way, the, the, the people took, uh, took it in possession. I mean, one of the galleries, there was a hammock uh, on it and uh, incredibly the plants and the way the people live. Uh, I, it, it was truly inspiring. And my question goes about, um, you have uh, um, very many ways or very, um, uh, to, to approach the living. I mean, from what you say, is it about rooms, the very typical uh, plans of rooms to the, let's say in Erlenmatt, it's much more about open space and, and so on. And I was wondering, um, do you ever go back to, to all these places that you've built and do you talk to the people to, to see how they experience it and 
in the end, you know, do, do you learn something also from them? What works, what doesn't work? When do we make a, a plan of rooms and, and when do we do, let's say, flowing spaces? Yes. Um, well, we don't build so much buildings that you could go to all of them all the time. I <laughs> just to uh, say that maybe at, uh, in first hand. But then, um, of course, we we uh, yeah we, we there is uh, uh, occasions to to come back, and uh, in the case of Erlenmatt, um, there is a lot of people that uh, really like it. I'm sure there is also people that don't like it. Um, uh, we have uh, the people we know. They have really uh, yeah they have, they they like this potential to be able to build further on the apartment. Uh, many of them have changed or uh, added things to the kitchen because it's so minimal or um, yeah, they have, they've, they, they can somehow, as you uh, probably mentioned, they can take it in possession. Um, for instance, here, um, it was a bit different the case. Um, for instance, this excessive use of colors, uh, it was uh, right, rather controversial <coughs> for these elderly people. Because some of them really loved it, they um, appreciate it a lot that it's not this wooden, uh, everything is white. But some, of course, really hated it, especially with linoleum uh, floors that kind of reminded them uh, of, uh, of, of older times or so. Um, uh, yeah, I think there is not, not a recipe, but it's very important to go back and then uh, talk to the people that live there and then figure out what is maybe a good idea and what is a less good idea. Um, that uh, That is for sure the case and uh, one can learn always also from the people or this, uh, yeah, because in the end it's them that uh, use it or it's the, the stage or the, the space for their life. Yeah, I don't know if I could answer your question. Thank you. It was uh, very nice to see that you have a lot of uh, fun uh, during your work, so <laughs> you can really feel that. But I have a rather uh, technical question. At the Erle Matt project, you said the slabs were just 18 uh, centimeters, so no pipes inside. Um, and we saw the, we saw the electric, uh, electric pipes were... Uh, uh, like on the wall, but I was wondering, I guess you also have like ventilation sh um, pipes? Um, no. No, no ventilation. Mm. <laughs> there is uh, only um, uh, um, uh, an opening in the facade for, uh, uh, it's called Nachstromöffnung in German. It's like, a, basically there is only ventilation in the bathroom and when this goes on, um, there is like a system that uh, measures the pressure and then the air comes uh, through the facade, just the amount of air that is needed to equalize the, the pressure. But it's very minimal kind of ventilation system and there is no uh, other ventilation system in there. I mean, if I don't know if that's what you meant. Part of the question, yeah. yeah. Um, I was also wondering, like for example, the shower, I guess the shower is also on the on the floor level. So how do you put the pipe from the shower? Away? No, so um, just immediately shaft there. No, the the shower. Um, there is no. There is bath tops in the in the bathrooms, and they are prefabricated, so they come totally um, complete on the floor. And um, we had quite high floors because we have so thin ceilings. We have uh, almost two meter seventy floors. And then um, uh, it's uh, over the floor uh, uh, of, I don't know what the anhydrite is, seven and maybe nine centimeters all together, come the water pipe uh, uh, to the bathroom. But since it's a bathtub, there is some space um, in between. That was one decision to, to work with bathtubs. <laughs> You can also shower in a bathtub. <laughs> okay, one last question, Sander. Uh, yeah, I have one uh, very uh, urgent and pressing question. Did, did you manage to get the right bathrooms in the right houses in the end? Well, to get... Ah, yeah. <laughs> you did? Yeah, 
No, okay, good. No, no, the real question is, I mean, I'm really triggered by this idea of the, the having all the, uh, like say, the technical uh, works of Erlenbad on the outside of the wall made me think of maybe working on a, like an old Land Rover, right? You don't have to mm. be a, a mechanic uh, to, to understand how the, the car works and you can put it on the bridge and then you can mm -hmm. work on it and maybe make it better. Is that an approach that some, somehow uh, for you has a, has a future in, in, in future um, projects because of this fact? Do you see this as a potential for people to improve further on their projects or work on their own homes really appropriate? Is it something that will, uh, has been a new, it, it appears to be a very sort of a, a unique feature in this project mm -hmm. from what you presented, but so um, it's just like a very promising uh, outset. Yeah, I mean, I must say um, we were um, also in this project, we were kind of also allowed, you know, to try this or uh, to I mean, this idea to unbundle this, uh, this building parts is just, it just makes sense, you know? It's not that it's a coincidence that now everyone talks about it because it just makes sense. You can build things back and uh, put it somewhere else or put it in the garbage, but then you can only put this in the garbage you know, that you have to throw away and replace things. Or, I mean, there's so many parts on a house that age differently. I mean, the, the, the structure ages, I don't know, 100 years or so, or 80 years, uh, compared to a small electrical pipe. So there must be, I mean, just so logical to somehow construct it um, in a way that you can tear it out together. But at the same time, um, yeah, in El Mott was, um, to this day, a rather special uh, uh, condition to be able to really work with this and uh, play this for once really true and see what it means. It means, first of all, um, the clients will want always everything. It has to be very cheap, but also very innovative, but also this and this and this and this. And in that case, it's just, uh, for instance, uh, clear, it's not the cheapest way to build. The cheapest way to build is the one that is integrated in the industry and everyone uh, knows how to do it and uh, uh, so when the electrical guy has to put uh, uh, square <laughs> pipes suddenly it's not the cheapest one they can do it then the guy must come that can <laughs> do it quite properly so it's this is really something yeah that is uh, i mean that this pro it's promising for future projects for sure but um uh, I must say, it's the, I, I would wish more uh, readiness, or we would wish ourselves more, um, uh, yeah, be more kind of normal, you know, to think like that. And it's still not um, uh, the main base is still what you know from the classic construction world. <laughs> and um, it is, there's is many points where it contradicts that was also that also was also a bit the case why um, yeah to build Elmont for us was a quite a big challenge. I mean we we have not built uh, fifty houses. We are still a bit yeah we are not uh, beginners, but um, still and uh, yeah it's a challenge to build like that. It's just not established in the in the commercial contractor world. <laughs> so yeah. Oh, I, I, uh, I wish you uh, yeah. many projects uh, after this uh, <laughs> project that you that you showed uh, tonight. I think uh, it was interesting to see sort of this relation between sort of really technical, structural, uh, to towards uh, yeah community living, making mm -hmm. uh, neighborhoods with uh, with building. That's I think that's uh, a very important part of our profession and uh, yeah seems that you're quite successful at it in, in your own way. And um, so thank you, uh, Daniel, uh, thank also you. Stefan, to come to Rotterdam uh, and have your lecture. Uh, thank you all for coming tonight. And uh, of course, we uh, would like to invite you back uh, next week for the lecture of Clancy Moore Architects. And now we, I suppose, we continue the conversation with uh, a beer at the bar. So thank you. Thank you.